the U.S. is challenging China over claims to the entire South China Sea as the U.S. sends warships through the region. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. The South China Sea, trillions of dollars worth of shipping goes through here each year. It's also got loads of natural resources. Several countries border it, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. But China claims it all. Uh, how? Well, as China's former foreign minister, Yang Jiechi, told those countries 10 years ago, China is a big country, and other countries are small countries, and that is just a fact. But now the U.S. is saying enough. The Trump administration piled pressure on China Monday, rejecting nearly all of Beijing's territorial claims in the South China Sea. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, in a statement, called the claims unlawful and denounced China's, quote, campaign of bullying to control them. That quickly sparked anger from China's foreign ministry, who responded at a press conference on Tuesday. The U.S. statement ignores the history and objective facts of the South China Sea issue. Oh, actually, the U.S. is finally paying attention to history and objective facts in the South China Sea issue. You see, for years, the Chinese Communist Party has been building artificial islands in the South China Sea to justify their territorial claims. At first, they were like, there's nothing to worry about here. We're just building them for civilian use, and then put missile systems on those islands, and began flying nuclear bombers over them. But hey, maybe those are civilian missile launchers and nuclear bombers. The Chinese Coast Guard and maritime militia also go around doing things like attacking fishermen from other countries that also claim parts of the South China Sea firing water cannons on Filipino fishermen, or ramming Vietnamese fishing boats. That's why the State Department said Beijing uses intimidation to undermine the sovereign rights of Southeast Asian coastal states in the South China Sea, bully them out of offshore resources, assert unilateral dominion, and replace international law with might makes right. Now, it's important to note that the shift in U.S. policy does not involve disputes over land features that are above sea level, which are considered to be territorial in nature. So, sorry, India. But this is actually a huge change in U.S. policy regarding the South China Sea. Before this, U.S. policy had been to insist that maritime disputes between China and its smaller neighbors be resolved peacefully through UN-backed arbitration. I don't think China was worried about that, since they have a huge amount of influence in the UN. And if things didn't go their way, well, they weren't really worried about that either. Like that time in 2016, when an international tribunal rejected Beijing's claims to the South China Sea. That was after the Philippines brought a case against China to the Permanent Court of Arbitration. The ruling was supposed to be legally binding, and the Chinese Communist Party completely ignored it, and kept building those military bases. Because who was going to stop them? No one wanted to start a war over it. And that's been the Chinese Communist Party's strategy in the South China Sea. Push as far as they can without going to war. In Beijing, some talk of a Scarborough model, a template for China gradually to exert control over the Western Pacific by snapping up one land feature at a time, a sort of incremental revisionism that slowly squeezes out the U.S. without ever providing a reason for a confrontation. Why do they call it the Scarborough Model? Well, it's named after the Scarborough Shoal, territory that's claimed by the Philippines and China. FYI, they're both wrong. The Scarborough Shoal belongs to me when I went there back in 2016 and planted my flag on it. What's that, Shelley? Okay, fine, it was our flag. Anyway, you should check out that episode of China Uncensored. But back in 2012, the Chinese Coast Guard occupied the Scarborough Shoal, 
So the Obama administration brokered a deal between China and the Philippines where both sides would leave. The following week, the Philippines ships left the Scarborough Shoal and returned home. The Chinese, however, stayed in the area. And the Obama administration did nothing. The Chinese Coast Guard occupies the Scarborough Shoal to this day. And the Chinese Communist Party learned it could get away with ignoring what the U.S. said about the South China Sea. The Obama administration had a fundamental misunderstanding of the Chinese Communist Party. They thought that they could convince the party to work within international norms and become a partner on important issues. Where we see them violating international rules and norms, uh, as uh, we have seen in some cases in the South China Sea, we've been very firm and we've indicated to them that uh, there will be consequences. Uh, but what we've tried to emphasize to them is if you are working within international rules and international norms, then uh, we should be partners. There's no reason that we cannot be friendly competitors on the commercial side and uh, important partners when it comes to dealing with the many international problems that. Now, Obama certainly wasn't alone in thinking that, but it didn't work out that way. Now, in 2013, the Obama administration began freedom of navigation operations in the South China Sea. That's when U.S. warships or aircraft carriers sail through the South China Sea to show that these are international waters that anybody can sail through, and they don't belong to China. Those operations have ramped up since Trump took office, which led to Trump calling Obama impotent about the South China Sea. Hey, it's not the size of your destroyer, it's how you use it. In fact, the U.S. conducted a freedom of navigation operation right before and after Pompeo's statement rejecting China's South China Sea claims. Actually, the announcement comes a day after the fourth anniversary of that ruling by the International Tribunal. But why does the U.S. care about the South China Sea anyway? The U.S. doesn't have any territorial claims in the area. You'd know if we did because we'd have built an artificial island shaped like a bald eagle. Or a hamburger. Either one. But while the U.S. doesn't want to get involved in the maritime disputes, it is interested in stopping China from taking over the entire area. And with the largest navy in the world, if the U.S. doesn't confront China over the issue, it's hard for other nations to do the same. And now, with this new policy of explicitly rejecting China's maritime claims in the region as unlawful, the U.S. government has more tools they can use, like sanctions on Chinese officials. In fact, this is just part of an ongoing attempt by the U.S. government to ramp up pressure on the Chinese Communist Party. Check out the episode I released earlier this week about seven major ways the U.S. is doing that. Now, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who support this show on Patreon. With YouTube demonetizing us so much, we'd have had to shut down the show. But your support keeps us going. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered to find out how you can help. So what do you think of the South China Sea announcement? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.